launched by Beloit College Department of Economics in 2008 and supported by a $4 million endowment, the Miller Upton Program aims to advance students' understanding of the nature and causes of the wealth and well-being of nations while developing essential skills in students to prepare them for a lifetime of success. It's really about all the challenging things that um, we have students do to build a variety of skills, from communication skills to the ability to think, to do teamwork. All of these um, set them up really well for a meaningful and successful career ahead. In celebration of 13 years of the Miller Upton program, please enjoy a brief history of how the program developed and a discussion of how the program can foster students' liberal learning and contribute to their success in life and career. I was a member of the Board of Trustees at the time and we were embarking on a capital campaign and one of the objectives of the capital campaign uh, was to find ways for the college to um, en enhance its educational uh, programming uh, to be experiential um, and offer that kind of an experience to students. When uh, we started thinking about uh, doing something like this, and when I talk about we, I'm talking about Jeff Adams, who was the department chair of the economics department um, at that time. We started kicking around the idea of bringing in an eminent scholar who would uh, talk about the big questions in economics. And initially it was one of those, bring somebody in for an evening event and, and have a reception and then they, they, they'd go away. And we started talking about those ideas uh, with uh, prospective funders and donors and, and members of the board of trustees at Beloit. And they came back and they challenged us. Uh, they said, this is a great kernel of an idea, but you really need to be thinking bigger. And we really wanted to break that, that mold. Miller Upton was the sixth president of Beloit College, and he was president from 1954 to 1975. 21 years, an incredible stretch of, of leadership. But he led over the course of that period with you know, two abiding convictions that the liberal arts college was the best place for young people to develop as at their, their moral grounding, their educational grounding, the, the qualities of a liberally educated person, which included not only critical thinking and, and critical reason, but also that ability to engage in civil discourse. Miller Upton, an economist, and his dean Bill Kolb, a sociologist, often debated the big questions in front of the student body in Eaton Chapel to demonstrate that intellectual rivals could also be steadfast friends. As President Miller Upton wrote, dialogue is difficult, but it should be possible on a college campus where people have mutual respect for one another and where there is the possibility of finding some area of common ground and of mutual modification of beliefs. The second thing that Miller was committed to were the ideas that underlie the free society, that underlie the good society. And that meant a lot of individual and political and legal freedoms, um, but also economic freedom. Because when you have the open, voluntary exchange of goods, services, and ideas, all of human society is benefited. And so when you bring those two passions together, a passion for the liberal arts and a passion for the ideas of a free society, that really is the, the underlying um, foundation of what the Miller Upton Forum and the Miller Upton programs are all about. The Upton Forum brings in the, among the most famous economists in the world come to Beloit every year to talk about the big ideas of economics and also the ideas that are shaping the world. And these scholars are handpicked, not just because they're famous, but because they're the scholars who are asking the big questions that matter. We want to, to create an opportunities um, or the environment for students to develop a capacity to think, 
critically. They need to be able to ask good questions. They need to be able to consider multiple and diverse viewpoints. And they need to be able to question their own assumptions or the assumptions of people that they follow. We've invited um, you know, natural scientists, physicists. We've invited um, psychologists, um, political scientists, anthropologists um, to come and give talks uh, during the Upton forums because we want them to enrich the conversation by bringing their disciplinary perspectives into the conversation. The Miller Upton program was a valuable and enriching capstone to my economics experience at Beloit. The opportunity to talk to an eminent scholar in the field I had dedicated four years to studying was thrilling. The scholar my year took me seriously and engaged me without derision or judgment, even though I openly questioned certain aspects of his work. That is exactly the reason I went to Beloit. To be able to really engage with my professors and the guests they bring on campus is a blessing that only a small liberal arts school can provide. I think the Miller Upton Forum is a great example of a department coming together around this fundamental Beloit principle that our views as students, no matter how half-baked or misguided or premature, deserve time and consideration. That we are valuable and our ideas are valuable and we're more than just faces in an auditorium or marks in a grade book. From 2008 through 2020, the Miller Upton programs have gone through 12 Miller Upton forums, 13 economic senior seminars, and 12 annual proceedings, all seeking to deepen students' understanding of the wealth and well being of nations and to promote their liberal learning. Many distinguished scholars and intellectuals have participated, including three Nobel laureates in economics Douglas North, Eleanor Ostrom, and James Heckman. Many of the early forums focused on the institutional foundations that support long-run economic growth and development, while other forums turned our attention to more global issues such as international trade, energy, and environmental issues, climate change, or human capital. When Jeff and I were deciding, you know, what was our dream list of people that we would want to have, uh, that we would want to invite uh, to serve as Upton Scholars, we had our wish list. And at the top of that list was Douglas North. And he was the co-recipient of the 1993 Nobel Prize in Economics. Doug North's uh, research program was right in line with the concepts behind the Forum on the Wealth and Well-Being of Nations that uh, Douglas North's work is focused in on the ideas and institutions of what generates wealth and well-being. And that put us on the map because when we were able to get Doug to be the first Upton Scholar, it, it gave the signal to anyone else who would follow that we were the real deal, that this was going to be a incredibly high quality experience. He helped us to secure later Eleanor Ostrom as the 2011 Upton Scholar. And so it starts to create a kind of cascade effect of great scholars following in his wake. So Yasheng Wang talking about what explains the economic growth in China? Is it the market or is it um, state intervention? Um, or it could be on the topic of environmental economics and how is it that we engage in collective action when individually it might be in our best interest to do things that are harmful to the natural environment? Now, the economic seminar usually held in the fall when the Optin Forum is held as well. Uh, starts, you know, in early September and it starts very much immediately on learning and understanding the work of the upcoming Optin Scholar. And so once you delve very deep into that, in conjunction, in, in tandem to that, every single student is uh, performing a research project that begins with a question, a review of literature, uh, an understanding of methodology and what kind of method you will apply to a certain economic question that uh, students have 
planted, though the often form gives us the opportunity to not only study the scholar prior to their arrival at the end of October, but once they're actually in class with us, they actually have a conversation, potentially Nobel laureate even, which is quite impressive, have one-on-one -on -one conversation with students, uh, professors open up a couple of dinner nights that you can have with the Upton scholars, and beyond the small panels that they have throughout the week, because there's, there's a week-long kind of panel discussion with other professors from different departments, very interdepartmental and interdisciplinary as things are at Beloit. It, it also culminates in the big keynote address open to the entirety of campus and the community, which is very well attended. I really looked up to Dr. James Huckman and his research did make you know, a very big impact on me. Uh, we got an opportunity to discuss you know, our research with him and get his ideas and suggestions and advice. I never expected myself to you know, sit in the same room with a Nobel laureate just like a few feet away and talk about you know, the things that I am studying or the things that I'm trying to pursue. The annual proceedings is an annual publication. All the talks, all the presentations at the annual forums, we turn them into papers to be published in the annual proceedings. Um, but then the top students' paper from the Economic Senior Seminar are, can also be published in the annual proceedings. So this is a really rare opportunity for undergraduate students to have a way to publish their work. It was my first time being published, so I was stoked. I was back in India when I got the email for the winter break and I told my mom and it was just, you know, a great day. It's been amazing for me to see it in practice. Each of the scholars that we've brought to campus has really engaged with the educational experience that we have at the college. I've spoken with a few that felt worn out at the end of the week uh, because the students had it had uh, you know, challenged them so much, uh, had been so inquisitive, um, had embraced what they had uh, been teaching. Uh, it's really been a great thing to see. Professor Jeff Adams has said that when you start college, you have um, perhaps this sense of adolescent certainty. And by the end, there's almost a way in which you should feel as though you're able to enter the classroom or enter discussion with an open mind, with what we might refer to as the learning stance. As Upton said, be open to the possibility of the modification of your own beliefs. It's not bragging, but really I think they gained true freedom. Right? There are many different ways to define freedom, but I'm talking about the freedom of thoughts and freedom of mind, which is something that you cannot obtain unless you have an ability to think independently and critically. And it is through you know, um, programs such as what we have, the Upton program, that we develop that capacity for students. And through that process, they gain freedom. It's an opportunity to take the Upton Scholar's ideas into a new direction that the Upton Scholar perhaps had never even thought of before. And that application of those ideas into a new context, to a new problem, is the sort of uh, benefit of a liberal education where you not only absorb ideas, you not only learn ideas, but you take those ideas, you apply them to novel contexts, and that's really the liberating spirit of a liberal education. I actually did a survey um, of econ alum to ask about their career outcomes, and I'm happy to report that our econ graduates and alum do extremely well. They, are very, they do very well financially, and they also do very well in terms of finding meaningful work. A very high uh, percentage of them report that um, they think their work makes the world a better place. It is my strong belief that um, the liberalized education, the economic curriculum, and programs such as the Optim program 
are very important in helping students uh, prepare for their careers and um, help uh, explain why they are successful. Whatever it is that we're learning in classroom does not stop there at all. It goes far beyond it. And that's something that Beloit, I think, promotes very, very well. Beloit's ability to just provide that critical way of thinking and imparting it upon its student is a skill that just lasts a lifetime. So regardless of what the future may look like, uh, I think Beloit students and, and myself, I feel ready not just for the future, but for any future. Discussion, debate, and the advancement of scholarly economic ideas surrounding the wealth and well-being of nations. The Miller Upton program prepares students for success in life and careers by enabling them to cultivate the habit of asking good questions, considering diverse viewpoints, and interrogating one's own knowledge and assumptions. That is the essence of liberal learning and the legacy of Miller Upton.